Devil May Cry 5 is finally here, and it's bringing all kinds of changes to the official timeline. DMC 2 now is set before 4, and 5 takes place years after 4. Well, since the game is brand new, we're not sure where the dust will settle on the story, but let's look back on the story we've known so far across the original four Devil May Cry games. And before you say anything, no. We are not including 2013's DMC Devil May Cry. You can thank us later. The Way Back. The Devil May Cry universe, like many tales, starts out with a conflict between light and darkness. The world is formed in pure chaotic darkness before it's eventually split in half by a ray of light. The light half becomes the world of mortals, and the dark half becomes the demon world. The two go their own completely separate ways for quite a while until 2,000 years before Devil May Cry 1. The Devil Prince Mundus is born into the demon world. Mundus, a supremely bad dude, quickly rises to power, amasses a giant evil army, and murders the seemingly chill and nameless demon king to take over his Throne. Unlike the previous Demon Kings, Mundus sees the human world as some prime real estate for conquering, so he immediately starts invading with his giant demon army. The humans, who happen to be way weaker than demons, aren't doing so great, and the fate of the world is looking pretty grim. But then, a great demon knight named Sparta rebels against the injustice of Mundus and his armies. Sparta single-handedly drives them out of the human world and seals Mundus away in a marble vault in the demon world. In an elaborate ritual, he closes the gateway between worlds, the Tower Temenigru. It involves his blood, the blood of a human priestess, his sword that is also named Sparta, his mystical pure amulet, and finally, a bunch of demonic energy. Because you can never be too careful, he locks a bunch of powerful demons inside the tower to guard it, and seals the whole thing underground by taking away the names of the Seven Sins, who are weakened and trapped in the human world. The guy sure liked to seal things. After all this, he becomes known as the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. He does some cool and totally mysterious things for the better part of two millennia until not very long ago. Sometime in the 20th century, Sparta finally settles down with the human wife, Eva. They have twin sons, Virgil and Dante, and he gives Eva his perfect amulet to divide between the two. After that, Sparta disappears and lives out the rest of his years. To this day, his cause of death is a mystery. Eva gives the amulet halves to Virgil and Dante and is murdered in front of a young Dante by demon assassins sent by Mundus. This trauma causes him some lifelong mom issues and an intense hatred of demons. After their mother's death, the two brothers grow distant. Virgil is fascinated with their demonic heritage, while Dante embraces the human world. Fast forward a number of years, and we get to the events of Devil May Cry 3. By now, Dante is a reckless, cocky young demon hunter with a Devil May Care attitude. Can't see what we did there? <laughs> As he's about to open his yet unnamed shop, when a mysterious customer with a gnarly face scar named Arkham appears. Arkham tells Dante he has an invitation from his brother Virgil and disappears, leaving the place to be attacked by demons. Dante slays the lot of them and heads outside to see the tower Temenegru risen from the ground and the whole area swarming with demons. Arkham, a scholar of the demonic and a seeker of demonic power, has formed an uneasy alliance with Virgil, who seeks to acquire Sparta's power that's locked inside of Temenegru. The two await Dante at the top of the newly raised tower to reunite the two halves of Sparta's perfect amulet. Dante fights his way up the tower, besting its powerful keepers and adding their souls to his arsenal of weapons. Along the way, he encounters a brash young devil-hunting lady by the name of, well, Lady. Lady, who hates all demons, is fighting her way up the tower as well, but she's got no interest in collaborating with Dante. Dante also encounters Jester, a mysterious man with a ridiculous voice, strange dark magic, and wearing, yeah you guessed it, a full Jester outfit. At least he's helpful. Jester gives Dante advice on how to navigate parts of the treacherous tower. When Dante makes it to the top of the tower, he challenges Virgil to a duel. To put it quite bluntly, Dante gets completely wrecked. And the fight ends when Virgil stabs Dante, steals his half of the amulet, and then stabs Dante through the chest with his own sword, leaving Dante to bleed out in the rain. But it's not over yet. Dante's devil trigger powers awaken. He tries to fight Virgil with his demonic second wind, but Virgil and Arkham escape to open the gate with the completed amulet. Releasing demon powers can take a toll, so Dante passes out almost immediately. When he comes to, he jumps down the side of the tower in pursuit. Virgil and Arkham descend into the final chambers of the tower to open the door to the demon world. Once there, Virgil cuts Arkham down, deeming him no longer useful. Along the way, he noticed that despite their annoying encounters with Lady, Arkham always avoided killing her. Turns out that Arkham is her father. Lady came to the tower to kill Arkham as revenge for him killing her mother in pursuit of demonic power. Once Lady discovers Arkham at death's door, he expresses regret for his many crimes and blames the whole thing on Virgil before passing away. At least, that's what he'd have us believe. So Dante fights his way to Virgil, and the two demonic-powered siblings spar once more. And after a lengthy and even battle, Lady interrupts and joins in to kill Virgil. With everyone in a weakened state, Chester jumps in, beats them all up, and reveals that, hey, he was Arkham the whole time. He explains that Virgil's unsealing attempt was unsuccessful because it was missing the blood of the human priestess who helped Sparta perform the ritual long ago. Still needing that blood, Arkham stabs Lady through the leg with her own bayonet, because see, she's a descendant of the priestess on her mother's side. And so, Arkham completes the ritual, ascending to the top of the tower, opening the gate to the demon world, and achieving his true and final goal. Not down 
and out just yet, Dante and Lady make their way up to Arkham, but get into a fight about who gets to confront him. Dante claims Lady isn't strong enough because, well, she isn't a demon. And Lady says it's her responsibility to kill her father and that Dante has no business getting involved. Both have solid cases, but Dante's is just a little more convincing. Dante wins the scuffle and the two of them reconcile. To help Dante defeat Arkham, Lady gives him the Kalina Anne her bayonet-equipped rocket launcher named after her mother. Dante pursues Arkham into the now-open demon world, and while Arkham has absorbed Sparta's power, his body is unable to handle it, and it morphs him into a gigantic, demonic blob creature. Virgil aids Dante in killing Arkham and claiming Sparta's power for himself. The siblings bond over destroying Arkham's demonic form and tumble down to the gate between worlds. On top of the tower, Lady encounters the severely wounded human form of Arkham, who remains unrepentant. She executes him fully rejecting the name he gave her, Mary, and formally adopting the name Lady. Meanwhile, on the edge of the demon world, Dante and Virgil battle over who gets their father's sword and amulet. Dante wins, but Virgil decides to remain in the demon world, keeping his half of the amulet. Dante returns to the human world and reunites with Lady. He returns her weapon, and she tries to comfort him about the loss of Virgil, coining the phrase, Devil May Cry. The two form a demon hunting partnership, and Dante finally opens his shop with that name, Devil May Cry. As for Virgil, well, he follows his father's steps in the demon world, charging into battle against the demon king Mundus. His fate is unclear. Until, of course, Devil May Cry 1. Sometime later, Dante is hanging out in his now established shop when a mysterious woman appears. She enters in typical DMC fashion by driving a motorcycle through the wall. After asking him about his career, she then attacks him with lightning powers, his own sword, and the aforementioned motorcycle. Dante fends her off pretty easily, and she introduces herself as Trish. Oddly enough, she looks just like Dante's mom. She asks him, being Sparta's son and everything, to help her defeat Mundus, who has regained power and is attempting to invade the human world again. Always ready to slay demons, Dante agrees to help, and the two travel to the gate to the demon world on Malay Island. Unsurprisingly, the island and the castle on it are filled with monsters, demons, cool living weapons, and a gigantic magma spider. After many battles, Dante encounters a gigantic mirror, and a sinister version of his own reflection walks out of it. The reflection transforms into Nilo Angelo, a great sword wielding knight with a resemblance to Sparta. Nilo Angelo trounces Dante at the end of a long fight. As he's choking Dante out, he notices, hey, Dante's amulet. He proceeds to drop him, having a magical lightning migraine, and teleport away. Dante makes his way through the castle, fighting many, many fights along the way. After multiple encounters with Nilo Angelo, Dante finally defeats him to reveal that Nilo Angelo is his brother. Virgil lost his fight against Mundus and was turned into Mundus' puppet. Dante takes Virgil's pendant and reunites the perfect amulet, awakening the power of his father's sword. Further in the depths of the castle, Dante hears Trish calling out for help. He runs to her side, preparing to fight the giant laser-shooting blob demon called Nightmare that appears to be menacing her. But surprise! Trish immediately blasts Dante in the back with some lightning. She's actually an agent of Mundus that he created to bring Dante to the island. Nonetheless, Dante destroys Nightmare, who collapses the cavern in its dying breaths. Among the chaos, Dante ends up saving a dismayed Trish from a giant falling stalactite. She asks him why he would save her after her betrayal, and he replies simply, because you look like my mother. He tells her to stay away from him and rushes to confront Mundus. At the end of a long cathedral, Dante finds the giant marble statue that contains Mundus. The two shoot the breeze before Mundus reveals a captured Trish, who he threatens to execute. Mundus pins Dante down with a bunch of energy javelins and prepares a killing blow. But at the last second, Trish pushes Dante out of the way and takes the shot herself. The sight of her death awakens the power of Sparta within Dante, and he and Mundus duel to the death. Well, Mundus' death specifically. After the epic battle, Dante returns to the cathedral to mourn over Trish's body. He leaves her with his father's sword and amulet and departs. But when he tries to escape the island, Mundus attacks. He's fully opened the portal between worlds. All hope seems lost, but a somehow still alive Trish suddenly imbues Dante with her power. With their powers combined, Dante defeats Mundus, who swears that he will return to rule the human world one day. Victorious, Dante and Trish escape through the collapsing tunnel on a biplane that somehow falls through the ceiling. The whole island explodes, and the two of them enjoy a moment together contemplating the sky. Back at the shop, now named Devil Never Cry, the two new business partners begin work as a pair of demon hunters. Now, the next part of our timeline includes some new changes to the series chronology. According to a recent tweet from Capcom producer Matt Walker, while the timeline used to place Devil May Cry 4 before Devil May Cry 2, the order has now been switched. So that means the next game we're going to talk about is Devil May Cry 2. Lucia, a young devil hunter, is searching for four sacred relics called the Arcana. To get the first one, the Arcana Medaglia, she meets up with Dante for some backup. They kill some demons, and she instructs him to follow her to Dumeri Island, aka Vita Marley, an ancient island hidden off the coast of the Americas. Once there, Lucia's mother, Matie, sets the stakes. Matie once fought alongside Sparta to protect the island from demons. Now, Arius, a ruthless businessman seeking demonic power, is attempting to resurrect the ancient demon king Argosax using the four Arcana. Dante flips a coin to decide whether or not to help. 
and ultimately agrees to stop Arius. Also, the island is covered in demons, which really should be no surprise at this point. Dante fights his way through the island, including a demon-infested helicopter and a giant skyscraper-infesting demon named Nefastris. Lucia eventually confronts Arius, but she gets more than she bargained for. Arius lets her know she's actually a mannequin demon named Kai. Good to see Arius is holding the Devil May Cry tradition of villains creating sidekick heroines. He demands she brings him the rest of the Arcana and blasts her away with magic. Some more demon fights and a building self-destruction later, Lucia and Dante are reunited. She gives him the last of the Arcana, instructing him to take them to Matie, then leaves to confront Arius again. Matie rejects the Arcana from Dante, requesting that he take all the Arcana and go save Lucia, who is certainly in danger. Dante flips a coin to decide, and once again, luck is on Lucia's side. He agrees to go rescue her. Dante confronts Arius and manages to save the captive Lucia, but gives up the Arcana in the process. Arius promptly blows up the building they're in, and the heroes escape and recoup. Dante leaves Lucia behind to hunt down Arius. He finds Arius in the middle of a ritual to achieve immortality, but reveals that he swapped his personal coin for the Arcana coin, causing the ritual to fail. The two trade blows and Dante shoots Arius dead. Lucia only has one more request for Dante, to kill her as well. She's afraid that being a creation of Arius means she will eventually turn fully demonic. Before the two can come to a consensus, the door to the demon world bursts open, and the two have a new topic for discussion. Who will go inside to deal with the problem? Dante decides it with a coin flip, and again, Lucia lucks out. Dante heads inside after giving his coin to Lucia. Turns out there are a lot of demons in the demon world. Dante fights his way through and eventually defeats the great demon Argosax. He drives his motorcycle into the depths of hell, uncertain of how to make his way back to the human world. Meanwhile, Lucia does battle with the demonically resurrected Arius, destroying him once and for all. Matie comforts a sad Lucia, reassuring her that Sparta once made a similarly improbable return home. Lucia takes out Dante's coin and, surprise, it's a double-headed coin. Oh, what a trickster. Back at the shop, Lucia awaits for Dante's return, flipping his coin. Suddenly, she hears a motorcycle approaching, drops the coin, and runs outside. Which brings us to Devil May Cry 4. On the remote island nation of Fortuna, the militant religious organization, the Order of the Sword, is amassing devil-slaying weapons and secretly researching demonic power. The Order worships the Dark Knight Sparta, believing he served as a feudal lord to Fortuna long ago. In Sparta's name, they are committed to the eradication of all demons. Nero, a young holy knight of the Order who looks a lot like Dante, is running late for a big ceremony that his love interest, Kyrie, is singing at. Even though his right arm is in a sling, he fights a bunch of demons in the street, making it to the ceremony just in time. Yes, just in time for a long, boring speech and prayer from Sanctus, the high priest of the Order. A tremendously bored Nero gets up to leave and is surprised to find that his injured right arm is glowing. Suddenly, Dante swan dives in through a stained glass window and immediately shoots Sanctus point blank in the head. How did he make it back from hell? Well, we don't really know, but hopefully we'll get answers in Devil May Cry 5. He proceeds to murder a bunch of holy knights in the ensuing chaos, eventually turning his sights to Credo, Kyrie's brother, who is attending to Sanctus' body. Finally, Nero and Kyrie intervene, with Kyrie and Credo escaping and Nero engaging Dante in a lengthy duel. The fight ends when Nero awakens the devil bringer power in his right arm and impales Dante with his own sword, pinning him to the giant statue of Sparta. At this point, Dante is no stranger to having a sword lodged in his chest, so he takes the hint and leaves. But before he does, he tells Nero that they're both not totally humans, and neither are Sanctus' holy knights. Kyrie and Credo bring Nero his sword, the Red Queen, and Credo orders Nero to hunt Dante down. They head outside to find the whole city being attacked by demons, and are separated, dividing duties to help the townspeople. On his way to the castle to hunt Dante, Nero meets Gloria, a new member of the Holy Knights with an unorthodox fashion sense. Meanwhile, Sanctus has been brought back from the dead by a demonification process called the Ascension Ceremony, courtesy of the Order's stuttering alchemist, Agnes. Nero stumbles upon Agnes' secret demonic research facility and finds Agnes studying the broken pieces of Virgil's sword, Yamato. He obsesses over Nero's demonic arm and explains that Sanctus is researching demonic power to build an army strong enough to take over the human world. He then summons giant flying knights who pin Nero to a wall with huge lances before impaling Nero on a giant sword. Typical. The near-death experience awakens Nero's devil trigger, and the nearby Yamato is mended and flies to Nero. Agnes flees, and Nero presses onward. Agnes, Sanctus, and Credo hatch a plan to capture Nero and Yamato. Once Gloria offers Sanctus Sparta's sword, she's trusted enough to finish the job Nero started hunt Dante. Kratos transforms into his full demon form in an attempt to apprehend Nero. Nero bests him, but is stopped by a shot Kyrie, who is then promptly kidnapped by Agnes. Kratos and Nero agree on a truce, and Kratos flies off to investigate. Further in, Dante confronts Nero, but Nero is more focused on saving Kyrie. Dante demands Nero returns Yamato, and the two do battle again. Eventually, Dante resolves to let Nero go with the sword. Shortly after, he meets up with Gloria, who's actually Trish in disguise. At the top of the castle, Nero discovers Sanctus on top of a colossal Sparta statue called the Savior, imbued with demonic power 
power, Sanctus controls the statue and fights Nero, ultimately capturing him by using Kyrie as a human shield. Sanctus reveals that the savior needs to be fully awoken by using the blood of a descendant of Sparta. While he originally planned to use Dante for this purpose, Nero fits the bill as well. Kratos intervenes to try to save Nero, but is quickly run through by Sanctus. Dante and Trish arrive on the ground to stop Sanctus's plan, but they're sure to berate Nero as he's absorbed into the statue. The savior flies off into the sky, and a dying Kratos tasks Dante with saving Nero and Kyrie, all while Agnes uses Yamato to open the portal to the demon world, further flooding the city with demons so Sanctus can save it. Dante confronts Agnes in a bizarrely theatrical manner and slays him, reclaiming Virgil's sword and destroying the Hellgate. He confronts the savior, damaging the exterior and passing Yamato inside so Nero can attack from within. Nero uses his power to escape his weird flesh prison in the statue and sets off to rescue Kyrie. Sanctus, wielding Sparta's sword, engages Nero in a tremendous final battle. Nero triumphs, killing Sanctus, saving Kyrie, and disabling the savior. He returns Sparta's sword to Dante, but sets off immediately to destroy the suddenly reanimated savior. Dante and Nero exchange thanks, and Dante Dante gifts Virgil's sword to Nero, who is hinted to be Virgil's son. Kyrie and Nero are finally reunited. Back at the Devil May Cry shop, apparently Devil never cried in a stick, Lady and Trish argue over the amount that they got paid for taking down the order, and the three of them take off on another demon hunting job. I really hope you familiarized yourself with the timeline, cause now Devil May Cry 5 is mixing it all up. What do y'all think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment, and be sure to subscribe to the leaderboard. I'm your host Marcus, thanks for watching.